Okay, so um, welcome to this next session with Agnes Sandor from Naval Labs. And today we are going to be focusing on the reflective writing analytics, which is quite distinct genre from the analytical writing that we've been focusing on so far. And uh, so we're really looking forward to getting a bit of insight into how this is working behind the scenes, Agnes. So we'll, we'll hand over to you. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Simon. So I'll uh, share my screen. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Great. So, so as Simon said, this time I talk about the reflective parser, which we, well, we did see, uh, we have seen up to now what um, the underlying um, considerations are behind rhetorical, the, the kind of rhetorical analysis that I'm doing. And um, uh, we have had some theoretical and technical background for it. We saw the general description of the concept matching analysis framework, the system architecture and tools, and we walked through the existing system, but the existing system and all our examples have always come from the analytical parser. And now we are going to, uh, to speak about the reflective parser, which is indeed very, very different from it, but it is based on the same background. And in fact, building this reflective parser was for me a test case, a test bed for, for the concept matching framework. Does it work for this? So it, it was very interesting. And also where well, the background is very different as well, because uh, whereas the, uh, um, the rhetorical analysis of argumentative texts is more, uh, uh, more studied and more apparent. This is not the case for reflective texts. Reflective texts, because they are subjective and because they, they speak about uh, a person's reflections and thoughts and feelings, they have less uh, strict um, um, structural uh, requirements and also structural characteristics. So these texts are really widely um, uh, studied and there are many different ways of studying them. So uh, just setting up a list of rhetorical moves that we could discover in, in reflective texts, it was a, a big task. And this task was carried out by Adam and Andrew. Uh, they looked up the the, the the literature of how uh, reflective texts are analyzed and they came up with this table which summarizes uh, different uh, re um, rhetorical moves that can be uh, uh, seen in, 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 in reflective texts. So you see reflective texts speak about thoughts, feelings, which give the orientation according to Martin and others, then challenge and self-critique, potential solution, learning opportunity, which are distinct categories for one type of theory in Martin and others. And in Luke and others, they, they, well, they, they give different, uh, Luke, Luke uh, gives different categories. And so... Um, if I can just jump in there for... Yeah. For people who are watching this afterwards, then um, Agnes was referring to the work by Andrew Gibson and Adam Aitken. Um, right. And this is documented in our 2017 paper at the Learning Analytics Conference. Right, right. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Simon. So, uh, and so the, 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 there is this um, uh, axis of uh, of uh, the narrative axis of uh, of um, reflective texts is usually um, analyzed according to these lines, like thoughts, feelings, challenges, analyses, etc. And then there is another axis, which is the depth of the uh, uh, of the reflection. So. 
when uh, when going to depth we can speak about our impressions which are a very light level uh, analysis of uh, re 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 light level uh, uh, reflection and going towards interpretation internalization integration and intention which um, which are deeper and deeper levels of uh, reflective thinking so according to these two uh, axes uh, adam and andrew uh, set up a number of questions which 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 uh, the, the rhetorical moves in reflective text answer for example what do i notice about notice about my situation what does it mean for me why do i feel this way etc so this table they set it up to um, to formulate the, the 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 content of the rhetorical moves that we we would like to to detect so as you see this is quite complex and complicated uh, so we we uh, simplified this a little bit for the computer to <laughs> to, to to handle it easier so instead of the uh, the uh, the first so you see thoughts and feelings uh there was uh one category initial thoughts and feelings about a significant experience then the challenge of new surprising unfamiliar ideas problems or learning experiences and then finally how do how new knowledge can lead to change so these these are the simplified uh, move, moves based on this table and based on this theory, on these theories. And on the other hand, instead of depth, we have one category which is which 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 um, uh, says deeper deeper reflection personally applied. So it this can be applied to all of these three categories. So there can be initial thoughts and feelings about a significant experience and there is another category which is the same but with a tag deeper reflection personally applied it is it, it is a an additional feature so this these are the three basic rhetorical um, moves that we are to detect so how do we detect ah yes and in 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 the in the um, in the reflective uh, analysis you also can see some underlined uh, passages segments of the text uh, like words associated with strong feelings expressions indicating self critique and i cannot read it uh, expressions uh, of, of something I, I cannot read it because <laughs> the, this thing hides it. oh no indicating belief learning or knowledge so these underlined things these don't come from the reflective parser these are um, patterns that have been um, uh, implemented by andrew in the tap uh, system so these these are patterns based on some lexical and uh, grammatical features uh, which have been implemented as well and which complement the the reflective moves we are only going to speak about the three reflective moves and uh how deeper reflection is is uh, detected and if i can just jump in there um, yeah people who are interested in the uh the 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 three at the top there um obviously you can read the paper for more but you can also read a blog post on the heta website where we talk about how we tune the um, responsiveness of of those three underlined mm -hmm. forms of affect and emotion when we worked closely with uh, an academic to to make sure that it was behaving in the way that she wanted for her students mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay, thanks thank thank you so this is uh, this is the old um, interface of uh, the reflective uh, analysis here you can see a text and you can see some sentences which are um, um, which are marked as initial thoughts and feelings about a significant experience and challenges and new knowledge with the three different uh, icons 
and the, the sentences that are uh, in bold uh, are about uh, deeper reflection. And here you also see the underlined, the underlined segments. And uh, there is some feedback. And, and so, so this, is, this is what it looked like. Now the new interface is, is a little bit different from this. Now the reflective roofs, how they are detected. Uh, to, uh, to remind about the concept matching framework. So in, within this framework, analysis framework, rhetorical moves are conveyed by patterns of constituent concepts. And the constituent concepts are instantiated by words or expressions in sentences, which are linked by syntactic dependencies. Now, the first thing here for me was to find what concepts uh, these rhetorical moves are about. And so I, I have come up with an ontology of concepts of re reflection. So there are different kinds, types of concepts that are, um, there, that are relevant here. So first, we, there are the thinkers and experiencers, that is the persons who reflect. And they are the sub I, I called these. So the, the names here are the, 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 the words I used for, for the concepts. The subject, that is the subject who, who, who writes the reflective text, the reflective person. So that is I. <laughs> this is very easy to detect. And then the other subject, because they're, they're, um, it, it is important in these texts what other people say of me, so I have to take into consideration this. So I need to know when other people speak uh, or, or feel or think something about me. So it is called the other subject, other persons, or it, it, they, they can be also so that uh, the teacher or uh, the peers who are in the course and uh, other references for other people. So this is slightly more difficult to to, to detect uh, the, the, the lexicon for, this, uh, for the instantiation of this cons constituent concept. Then we need to detect words that, um, that refer to thoughts and experiences. There are two big types of such concepts. One is called analysis, which is mental operation, which comes largely from the analytical parser, where we had the mental uh, and scope um, concepts. And so these were imported, and I will show this in the files. And then the other one is stance, which is feelings and effect, for which we haven't had any lexicon yet. And uh, I, I uh, adapted um, a previously existing lexicon for this, of words, of feelings and effect. And then uh, temporal factors are very important because we want to speak of what has happened, past and uh, the past and present, anything that related to the past and present is important because we want to speak about past experiences, we want to speak about what has changed, and also about the future because we, we want to uh, see what will change, what are the intentions for the future. And then the, the last um, kind of, of, um, of, of concepts are relations, relationships. Uh, we have one concept that is called link because we need to uh, see if there is some causal relationship between things. Uh, and we need to see if there are some explanations. I will speak about this later as well. We need to uh, be able to see contrast negation or negative meanings or tension because we want to see what went wrong what what when we criticize something there is some contrast we um, that, that is important to, de to detect and then the the third one is shift when there is a change between a previous um, state and a later state so these are the building blocks uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the, the rhetorical moves that we want to detect. So how, 
how how and and e and the, so the three the three moves are different combinations of these uh, concepts. We, we, we are looking for words that instantiate different combinations of these concepts in sentences. Uh, and these words need to be related syntactically in the sentences. And now I will show you some examples for the three. And then I will show you how the, the, the grammar was built through the grammar files. Now the first first um, uh, move is initial thoughts and feelings about a significant experience. So here I wanted to catch sentences that are about the subject analysis or and uh, feeling about um, an experience. So I, I I I have to tell you that this is something really really exploratory. I don't claim that it is only these, uh, this um, pattern that will uh, be uh, relevant for this, uh, uh, for this rhetorical move, but this, this is the way I set to it, and this is what was evaluated. And the evaluation proved to be quite more or less in, 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 in agreement with some human evaluation. So, for example, if there is a sentence like um, this, uh, that early role play felt distant and impersonal as I made a conscious effort not to let my emotions interfere with the job I had been given. So, this is an interesting sentence because uh, it speaks about the feeling, feelings and thoughts uh, in, uh, like this. So here there is um, the, the, the subject who made a conscious effort and the, he speaks also about my emotions. So the words that are important here are the conscious effort where you have a word of analysis uh, in relation with the, with, the, with the word of feeling. So if you have some... Um, uh, some or feeling or effect it's not effort is not it's, it's like an effect and uh, then you have you speak about your emotions then it it it, it is an indication that you uh, carry out a reflective move this reflective move is a basic one it is a description of your feelings it is not uh, it doesn't you uh, uh, th there is not an explicit challenge and there is not an explicit change in it. It is a description of uh, feelings and, uh, and, and what makes it significant is that, that it speaks about emotions. And what's more, in this sentence, uh, there is an explanation. As I made a conscious effort, there is a link. So you see, well, what, what, what is interpreted as deeper reflection personally applied well it is a way of saying it but it is sentences that um, uh, that make a link that that explains something so whenever there is an explanation about um, a feeling or emotion or about a change or about a challenge uh, then uh, uh, it is marked as as a deeper reflection so here Indeed, this sentence, in this sentence, there is uh, an explanation and there is a description of feelings about an, an experience. So here you see uh, the subject analysis and sounds uh, linked to something, linked to, um, uh, to an explanation. I then, see, uh, just, yes? just to jump in there, are you going to say a bit more about the distinction between bold, deeper reflection, personally applied, and just other kinds of sentences, which, you know, what... what mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it, that, it is basically, yeah. Yeah, how, how did you model the threshold? What, what were the conditions that led you to, to make that distinction? Well, the only, only threshold is, there is no, it's not a threshold, it is rather if there is an explanation in the sentence. I tried to model 
how we explain like causality or uh, explanations basically with the connectors when 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 the sentence is marked as one of the one of the um, uh, rhetorical moves and in the center and 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 the clause which is in uh, which is marked with the rhetorical move is an explanation or a causation or a link which is modeled in a way in the grammar then it is deeper reflection it it it, it, it is just grammatical right okay um all right yep, it's not, yeah and it's, it's certainly not every sentence which has got a personal pronoun in it Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Well, a personal pronoun actually is uh, not, not is, is um, a condition, but not, is, is not always a necessary condition. There are sentences where there are no personal pronoun, but uh, the personal pronoun is not a sufficient condition by any way, because it needs to be complemented with some other things. Yeah, but the personal pronoun is still uh, strong, but not sufficient. Yeah, Shivani, you wanted to ask something? Um, yeah, just another follow-up question regarding this. Um, uh, so the link, which is uh, the causality, is that the mm -hmm. only factor which, which impacts uh, the depth? Or well, is it is like a uh, causality, or? explanations, explanations. When, whenever there is an explanation in the sentence, but explanation is, uh, is captured through grammatical connectors. So uh, this is not something that has been completely worked out. It, is, uh, it, 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 it can be, um, it can be uh, improved a lot. So there are a lot of things about this system that can be improved because it was done quite quickly. And uh, there is this, uh, this, this framework for it, but there is a lot of fine tuning to be done. And of course, uh, there is also something to be done if, 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 if you wanted to implement some machine learning to do this, I think it would improve it a lot because it was uh, completely hand handmade uh, based on existing uh, lexicons and and it hasn't been really worked out what causality explanations it is it is uh, based uh, you you can see it in the grammar actually the grammar shows uh, what what really it is it is um, connectors which 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 indicate explanation but of course, you can explain in other ways as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that, does that answer you, Shibani? Yes, yes, that answers. Uh, but and I hope we'll see a bit more examples from there later. So, but this is well. Uh, we'll see one example for each move, and then we'll go through the grammar if we have the time. Okay. If great. we overflow, I can uh, continue it next time. Yep. Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks. So I, I just wanted to show one example for each and then go through the grammar. Is that fine? And then if you have some examples, then we can, uh, you can always send me examples and ask, ask me and uh, see together. Yeah. Is, is yep. this fine? That sounds good, yep. Yeah, I think this is great. Um, deep re reflection is hard to detect. So, so here is basically based on the, uh, the link um mm -hmm. rela relationship. The, the link 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 is, so, sorry sorry to interrupt you link is a concept yeah okay so it's based on the link concept the causality mm -hmm. explanation which is detected by the uh, type dependency grammar uh, relationship so that's uh, so that's information is used to detect deeper reflection that's yeah yeah well okay. this is this is some heuristics it is, it, is, it is to say that whenever there is an explanation of something, the, the, uh, but m maybe it's, it's not the only, well, this is maybe one, one factor of deep reflection that when, when you, can, when you find, try to find an explanation for your feelings or uh, you, you see co uh, cause and effect. And actually these 
uh, these concepts, uh, yeah, they come from the questions that I, 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 I what, what I did, how I came up with these concepts is I looked at the original questions, if we go back uh, here. So I looked at these original questions and I, I, I analyzed them in a conceptual way. And here you see also causality, uh, causality, links, causality, feelings, etc. So I, I modeled this, this table, the questions in this table, and this is how I came up with these categories. Is this clear? I see. So map the question to the concept. Right. I, I, uh, yeah, exactly. I mapped these questions to concepts. Yes. And I tested this. And I tested I, I, not, not only to these questions, but to several other things. I mapped uh, several descriptions of, of reflective rhetorical moves to concepts. This is how I start. Mm, I see. Uh, so the so concepts I didn't come out of my head. Okay, so I guess, can you explain a bit about the context, the, the first rhetorical move? So, just can you move to the slides? Just another thing. Initial this? thoughts and feelings about significant experience. Yes. So to detect this, uh, so what, what elements are required to, I mean, what concepts should be appear in the sentence? Yes, so uh, uh, these, these three concepts, uh, subject, analysis, and stance. So whenever a subject analyzes her feelings, so uh, these sentences, the sentences that you see here, initial thoughts and feelings about significant experience, uh, well, these are, um, uh, these have been made up to, uh, to, to indicate uh, this, uh, this rhetorical move. And then this is mapped into these um, concepts, the subject's analysis about her feelings or stance or effect. And whenever we find sentences, when a subject makes some thinking about his feelings, then we say that this is thoughts and feelings about significant experience. It is initial, it is not initial because it is at the beginning, but it is initial because this is what gives rise to challenges and changes them. So in, 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 in this case, these, um, these uh, rhetorical moves need not come uh, uh, sequentially in the text. We don't need, we, we don't require to have uh, initial thoughts at the beginning and challenges in the end, although more or less this is the case. But initial here is not, uh, uh, is, is, it just means that it is a basic, basic kind of, of, uh, of, of reflection. Does this answer your question? Okay, so basically the initials, okay, I see, now I can, yeah, I mean, so how about the experience? Uh, do we have the concept of experience? Yeah, well, the experience is the stance. So the words that are about feelings and effect. This is your experience. Right, so the word... Yeah, I, I mean, feelings and experience. Okay, okay, I understand your question. There is nothing, there is nothing that uh, differentiates feelings and experience in the system. There is, there is a different uh, uh, concept for thoughts and another uh, for feelings and experience. Right, so the word experience here does not mean an event in the workplace, say, uh, it's it's uh -huh. it's experience uh, okay. in the in the in the writer's emotions and and uh, feelings. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Simon. This is this is what I didn't capture in this in 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 in, 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 in the question. Yes, exactly, exactly. This is a very good point. So we uh, here we don't we don't cover anything that is related to a story, to events. 
We want to capture everything yeah. that is that is said about the events. Yeah. So as, as we go through this again in slow motion, then I'm, I'm thinking about whether we might want to clarify the ambiguity there around the labeling we gave that. Because I think um, many people might interpret significant experience as being mm -hmm. an experience um, of an event. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's, whereas this, this at, is, at the moment, right. it, is, it is coded in terms of my internal experience. Yes. It's, it's, reflection, yes, it's, yes. it's reflection on my internal experience of some incident. Mm. That incident may well be described in purely descriptive terms and might well be un, unannotated in, in, in Akarita, for example, because it's just, exactly. a, it's just a description of something that happened. Um, exactly. It's, it is only when they start to reflect on their experience of that incident that mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. um, this classification is made. Okay. Yes, exactly. Actually, in the grammar, when we get to the grammar, you will see how the rules map to the questions of the table because this is the comment for each rule a question from the table is is, is this clearer Ming? thanks yeah, yeah much clearer yeah it's clear now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay great so can we go on to the to the next move yes please go ahead <laughs> okay so the next move is the challenge of new surprising and familiar ideas, problems, learning experiences. So here you see we have the same as before. So the subject can do analysis and, and can speak about the feelings, but a very important element comes in, which is contrast and also shift. So you you you, you will, this this is quite close to the to the analytical um causes contrastive ideas but it is not so uh it's it's well it's still different because that um that was much more exact here what we want to capture is a little bit uh, loose looser so here a sentence I, I do not feel as though I have sufficiently developed my practical knowledge or phronesis to a point where I can speak up and challenge my manager. So <clears throat> here there is again the subject who feels, I feel, but does not feel. So there is a contrast. I do not feel. And I have developed my knowledge. Develop, it is a shift. And knowledge is uh, an analysis. So I, we have, I do, don't feel, I developed, and my knowledge. So he, these are the basic elements which indicate that there is some kind of challenge, some kind of tension, some kind of contrast. So, the, uh, so, so, so you see here that really the, um, uh, the, um, um, the criteria, the criteria are much more than the um, um, when negate than for example negation and uh, the personal pronoun. We need the small building book blocks that indicate that there is a contrast in in in, in thinking or in the reflection. But in this sentence, <clears throat> there is no connector. There is no explanation. It is it is it is it is just. Uh, uh, a statement, I do not feel as though I have sufficiently developed my practical knowledge. So, uh, well, it, this isn't um, uh, marked as deep reflection. This is a simple reflection, but it is a reflective move. So is this uh, cl cl clear? Yeah. So let's go on to uh, how new knowledge can lead to change. Well, I think this is, um, well, maybe this formulation is, is a bit more than, it, than what it is really. And yes, if you want to uh, um, reformulate this, maybe, maybe it would be better. Uh, so here we have, um, in the future, it would be beneficial for me uh, to sit with them and take notes on how they com completed the task. And this would mean 
that I'm still taking responsibility for my role by learning how to face the challenge next time it occurred. Now, uh, here I only marked what is relevant to this, uh, uh, to this move. So here I have in the future, it would be beneficial for me. And this would mean that. So here you have a future work in the future. And here you can remark that it is not in um, syntactically related to, uh, to anything in the sentence, but there are some exceptions for, the, for um, uh, the constraint of syntactic relationship in the case of parts of the sentences which are, di which, which are adverbial and which are not uh, very easily uh, attached to any other part of the sentence and or, or which, which uh, uh, refer to the whole sentence, like here in the future and uh, beneficial for me. So there is a stance for me in the future, and this is enough for it to be uh, a new, new knowledge. So it is new knowledge, it is new feeling or new thought. Uh, and here there is also an explanation. This would mean that, so this is marked as deeper reflection. So this is the third one, and I think that, uh, yeah. And uh, so we have seen uh, three examples of the three um, moves and uh, of, of how deeper reflection is, 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 is marked. And here uh, you see a very nice example where uh, one, of, one of the tutors, Peter Jones, he writes very, very nice analysis of, of uh, the student's reflections and marks it up with three categories and these categories are his own uh, and he marks uh, with yellow moderate reflection with green moderate high and with red high reflection and um, and, and and this is how he analyzed uh, a student's writing according to his categories now, if we map it to the reflective causal output, then we really see that it, 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 it does match really well. And uh, there are quite a lot of sentences here, but it is the sentences that he marked that are marked by the parser as well. So, so I think this, this is really a nice... Um, uh, way of, 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 of showing that this uh, approach does capture something of the human understanding. Otherwise, it is, uh, it is not so easy to see how these categories were uh, captured by this grammar. But, but this, this is a nice way of showing that th 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 there are no, uh, no corpora, uh, larger corpora, that are uh, annotated for reflexive writing, really reflective writing. So it is really a challenge to, to make a, a, an, an analyzer of these texts. Because the, the main problem here is the uh, annotation, the human annotation, because the categories are not well defined and uh, because they are not at all. So if, 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 if uh, I, I, I am sure if two people uh, marked the same text, there would be a lot of differences. So inter annotator agreement would not be very high. So um, this, uh, this, this I wanted to show you that uh, uh, the, actually the the analyses of Peter they um, they did contribute to to this system as well because I looked at them and I tested. Uh, he he he. Uh, uh, sent us uh, some analyses like this, this, not a lot, and uh, the, the system was tested on these partially as well. So this is uh, for uh, the background. And now I would like, to, uh, I, unless you have other questions, we can go on to, uh, to seeing how, how it is implemented in the grammar. Yeah, so I got a question. So in the Peter's annotations, um, mm -hmm. so he annotated and that is just uh, the level of uh, reflection, I mean the depth of reflection, but also 
annotated the categories of and the breadth of the reflection, different categories mm -hmm. of reflection? Yes. Well, he made up some categories for himself. He said, I have highlighted, so it is his text. I have highlighted sections of your original text that identify reflective considerations, and these have been further color coded as yellow, moderate, green, moderate, high. Yes, you're right. It is, it is like uh, the depth of reflection. Yeah, so this, yeah. this is depth. Okay. And so uh, after that, um, they have they explain this a bit. So making sense of situation yellow. So this is kind of category uh, relating the situation to an understanding of yourself. And so this is, I think in reflection, this is called association. So uh, relating the situation to an understanding of yourself. Have another intention on your part to construct a knowledge change, and that's change, uh, which change categories as well. Well, uh, well, actually, the thing is that we cannot map Peter's categories uh, directly to our category. Yeah, that's fine because yeah. <laughs> that's too complex. Yeah. As people yeah. propose different models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's quite interesting to see, yeah, he defined some of the categories. That's because I think association is quite uh, frequently uh, appeared in different uh, learn reflective writing assignments. <clears throat> uh, I I don't quite understand what what why what what you say about association. Oh, uh, so it's basically the one of the categories defined in the. Um, in the literatures, like uh, um, David Bold, um, his reflection model, reflective models, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. talk about the association. So basically, link the experience to the personal ah, okay. uh, feelings, or link the practice okay. experience to the theories or something learned in the class. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of awesome. mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. one category is quite. I found it, this ah, okay. this category is quite. Uh, frequently appear in different mm -hmm. learning, writing contexts. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you say that this association is linked to deeper reflection or? Um, or uh, I didn't quite. Uh, so the, the depth, so that is the depth of the reflection. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I just uh, read the literature recently and found out so it's quite difficult to define this. Uh, normally people define it in two dimensions of reflection. One is depth, and depth refers to non-reflection, reflection, or critical re reflection. I think in our case, uh, ref critical reflection refers to like deep reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a depth. Um, another dimension is uh, the breadth of the the um, reflection. So that's normally people. Yes, have. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think this is exactly this uh, table. Uh, Here you see the depth. To... These are two dimensions: depth, and this is where the reflective narrative. It is. It is like the. Isn't isn't it the same? Isn't it similar to this? Yeah. Um, somehow it is, but it's quite we. Um, it's different. I, I don't know who came up with who designed this table. It's quite. I couldn't find it any like. No, this 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 table was a distillation of the literature by Adam and Adam Aitken and Andrew Gibson. Um, from their from their reading of the literature. Uh, okay, okay. So it's not directly um, derived. I mean directly. Derived from the literature, it's kind of modification on some of the literature, literatures. Yeah, this is a synthesis. This isn't. This isn't. Um, this was. This was a, a novel uh, framework that was developed from the literature in order to structure the uh, the parsing. Hmm. Well, I, I I look at this as a as a subsequent uh, modeling. So uh, Adam and Andrew read the literature and they modeled it like this. 
And then out of this, I modeled the, the conceptual representation. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, maybe it doesn't it doesn't reflect exactly your reading, Ming. Uh, so some of the categories are mapping to 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 some of the literatures. I I can say yeah, like impression, mm -hmm. interpretation, internalization. They have so many the taxonomy of reflection. So yeah. Well. I think reflection is really, really, really a very, very difficult uh, concept and very difficult to analyze. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, when, when Agnes is, is, is over here in a few weeks, then we have more time to, to dig into this as well. I mean, yes, um, exactly. Um, I'm also, to see what the Peter John, Johnson? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a... Jones, Peter Jones. Yeah, do you have his the text? Yeah, I Ming, mean, we can we can follow up with that because okay. uh, yep. can, yeah, I dropped you a note. We can follow up with that because uh, that would be interesting to look at again. Yeah, yeah but sure. but anyway, with this reflective parser, um, uh, as as I said, it it was a it was a first uh, trial, and uh, it, it 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 did work to 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 some extent because it did uh, somehow. Uh, reflect human um, evaluation or human uh, assessment of reflective writing. But of course, there are very, very, very many issues with it. And uh, it can be worked on a lot. It, 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 is, it is not a final product <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. shall we go on with the grammars? Yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, I want to go through quickly uh, through through two files. Um, one is the add features, and uh, so here I so I I'm not going to show to to go through everything here because here there are at the beginning contextual reflection words that the, I I began with with. Um, some some details but what i want to show how the concepts have been um, um, worked out so the first concept is well the first one is uh, oh, no no it's well there is no order here the first one in this um, uh, file is analysis so here you see whatever from the uh, uh, analytical grammar had uh, the, the, in the in the in the lexicon had a feature publication or mental or scope. It uh, uh, it oh, oh no the publication no because the sorry uh, the publication is not relevant here so um, we don't want to capture words like in this chapter or or things like this. But the mental and scope words, they will get a further feature, which is analysis, because I wanted to differ differentiate the concept name in this grammar from the, the analytical grammar, and so I called it analysis. And so mental and scope are analysis. And then there, at the beginning, I, I called it reflection, and I added some more words, and these words, uh, are also called analysis. So these are the words that are analysis. And then there are some contextual uh, uh, rules. For example, when is the word find is analysis. I find this is nice or something like this. Then find is also an analysis word. So these, the, there are some other fine-grained rules for analysis. And then for stance, and these are the rules that add the feature stance in context because for stance, mainly the words come from a sentiment lexicon that, uh, that has been adapted a little bit to this task. So a sentiment lexicon, uh, there are several sentiment lexicons which, um, uh, which are basically a list, lists of words uh, about sentiments and feelings. And then I added sentiment lexicon to, to this grammar. 
and uh, also I added the words that are attitude or importance or surprise words in in uh, the analytical puzzle. So everything that is attitude, importance, surprise will have the feature stance. And stance is the name of the constituent concept for, uh, well, it is stance. And then uh, from the sentiment lexicon, the words that have uh, the feature sentiment and positive sentiment and negative sentiment. And then the, again, there are some other um, uh, contextual uh, rules. Then for other subjects, so how, what is the lexicon for other subjects? So first, I, I took the lemma he, when, when, when a he, something or a she uh, is mentioned in the text, it is, it is another person who speaks or who is referred to, and then himself, herself, they, themselves, theirs. And then uh, there is a, a feature profession, whenever a person refers to somebody by uh, her profession, then this is marked in the lexicon. So every word like teacher or uh, engineer, they are marked with the feature prof profession, profession. And so uh, these also get the feature other subject. And also in the lexicon, uh, the words are marked as person, the, the words that refer to persons, and they are also marked as other subjects. And then there are again context dependent features. Well, for contrast, first of all, the lemma not is uh, a, a sign of contrast. And then, uh, well, I took over the contrast feature from the, uh, uh, from, uh, from the analytical lex lexicon. And then for the link, so the, these, these are work that are, uh, marked as as because since and so these are words that um, that uh, refer to some explanation or causality and these in the stanford parser have uh, the dependency that is called mark so whenever there is a dependency mark involving the word as because since and so then this word is going to be marked as link. And also, so uh, when it starts a sentence, and so that as well, it is also um, an explanation. And then I also modeled some expressions like as a result or in order to, uh, and, and, uh, and other expressions. So you see that, um, I, I did some modeling of causation, but this is by far not uh, exhaustive. The reason for this, the final outcome of the task, etc. So there are there, there are quite a lot of rules about this. Or this made me think, for example, this is also a link. This is this is also causation. And then the temporality. Uh, I uh, I took the words that have the the feature duration or time or time expressions in the grammar, and I uh, mapped them to, uh, to to the temporality feature here. And also, uh, so these are all. Um, all sentences that, um, that that have some temporality feature, and these are mapped into the temporal temporality feature here, or the future temp. Uh, uh, and then uh, the shift is well uh, in in the um, uh, in the analytical grammar. There was a feature change for words, for some words like uh, change, for example, and I, 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 I um, or become or result in, and I gave them the feature shift here. And also 
I, I gave this uh, to some, I, I also modeled some expressions where some shift is, uh, uh, is, ex is uh, expressed. Like now I am thinking and, and uh, 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 this course definitely changed my attitude, etc. So if you want to see examples, for uh, for sentences that gave rise to the rules, then the sentences are are here in in the comments. This led me to think, and then there are some some restrictions, some some additional rules. But I'm not going to go through these. But if you want to go, uh, well, this is not a deep dive into it. It is just I, I just wanted to show you how it was built up, and then if you are interested in the um, uh, in the details, we can go much more in the in, in details. So I just wanted to show this. Uh, so here are the reflective concepts, the temporality, stance, contrast, shift, subject, other subject, analysis, and link. And they uh, are all marked with the feature reflective concept, so that if you want, but it hasn't been the case up to now, to mark uh, the the triggers of the reflective moves or the indicators of the reflective moves in the text to mark the words that made these the sentences uh, be selected uh, it can be done with the help of this uh, this uh, reflective concept feature which uh, which can well which which indicates which are these words which these words are sorry so yes. can, I ask, can i ask one question questions of course so the change concept actually mm -hmm. is used to detect the challenge uh -huh. rather than the the um the the, the change the future of, yeah the future both actually both okay i think it is used in both now so so now we saw the the preparation to uh, to the rules uh, for tagging the sentences. Now this file showed how the concepts are created. The concepts are in, implemented through the lexicons and uh, contextually. And now in the next file, I'm going to very, very, really very quickly go through the reflective um, uh, moves. What are the rules that make up the reflective rules? Right? Okay, yep, thanks. So I, I'm going to close this and I open this. So this, this is the dependency file. And here, here we'll go through quickly how the sentences are uh, tagged. So again, well, actually the, uh, the, the architecture of this file and of this grammar is very similar to the uh, uh, to the analytical grammar because first there is something very large. We set up a very general dependency, which is the reflective context, context dependency. It was like the key key sentence word dependency in, in in the analytical grammar. So it is we first take any sentence where any two words which have um, which have a reflective concept uh, are in, in a syntactic relationship. We start from something very large, and then what we are going to do, we are going to filter this, we are going to, to mark which ones uh, are, uh, should, should, be, should be really in, uh, associated, and then out of these associations, which ones, which are the ones that make up um, the reflective uh, moves. So the first important rule is this, that if, if we find two words that have a reflective concept and they are uh, syntactically related, then we say we mark these. It, it, it's just a markup. And then there are some, some, some uh, uh, fine-grained rules to prepare. And then we mark uh, so out of these sentences, which have been marked as reflective concept dependency, uh, we just mark their types. So if, if 
if one is temporality, then we say that um, this, this dependency will get the feature temporality. Because we are not going to be interested in which argument of, uh, of, of, of the dependency is temporality, we want to know just that in the dependency there is an element that is temporality. Actually, we want to know uh, of what two concepts, reflective concepts, the dependency is, uh, is made up of. So this, this is why we marked uh, the concept dependencies with the type of concepts, like future temp, temporality, analysis, stance, uh, subject, other subjects. So we are going to, uh, we, we are going to have dependencies which, are, which have the feature other subject and shift, for example, or uh, subject and temporality. And then we also, well, uh, what I did here was also uh, uh, take out, out of all these possibilities, the ones that will be relevant for the moves. For example, when the, uh, one, one of the basic ones is subject analysis. So when you have a subject that analyzes something, I wanted to keep it together. I don't I, so 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 as to to be able to uh, to to build up the rules easily. These are just uh, um, some auxiliary auxiliary rules for this. So I, I associated uh, uh, de concept dependencies which will be uh, relevant for the. Um, uh, for for uh, the final tags like subject analysis and subject stance and other subject stance and other subject analysis and contrast analysis contrast stance shift analysis shift stance etc. So there are some some associations like this and once I've had this uh, here are. Here are the, the, the rules for marking the sentences. Now, the, the sentences are first, the sentences, so it is, it is done a little bit differently from the, uh, uh, technically, it is just a technical aspect. Uh, the the, the root, it is the dependency uh, that, um, that includes this, the entire sentence. So it is a dependency that is the entire sentence itself. So D, dependency, the root, is the sentence itself. And so I give these um, uh, features to the sentences. So there will be sentences which, which have uh, the feature subject analysis, because in these sentences uh, uh, there is a dependency like I think, or I feel, or I experience, or anything like this, or my experience as well. Uh, so here I uh, uh, assigned the previously created uh, associations to the sentences, but still here, this is still the, uh, uh, the preparation for matching the uh, rhetorical moves. And here, this, this is marking the reflective moves. And here, there are the different rules um, that match these the, the questions that were uh, put in the initial table. So uh, one question was, what does it mean for me? Why it is significant? Why it is significant? So to to, uh, to match this, there are sentences which both have subject analysis and subject stance. Because it is, the, it is sentences where the subject thinks of some experience. And uh, there can be also some temporality, subject analysis and subject, uh, oh, oh, okay, or, or subject analysis, and stance analysis and temporality. So these are combinations 
of these concepts that 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 can make up for these meanings like analyzing things and uh, thinking and feeling things and for example here uh, yeah when subject analysis and stance analysis it is different from subject analysis and subject stance it's it's just a different combination of this so here we have the three concepts subject analysis and stance which are necessary for this and there are different combinations of this yes shibani would you like to ask something yeah i was wondering about this uh the association rules which are written combining two or more concepts together um mm -hmm. so i'm just wondering why why we are writing those additional rules can we just group all the concepts together as a whole when we mark those sentences as in well, it, something. Uh, I, I, um, I, I don't quite understand. Can, can, can you please repeat? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, so there are certain association rules which say subject plus analysis and then mm -hmm. subject mm -hmm. plus stance. Ah, okay. Uh, those combination of, of two okay. concepts. Uh, but then okay. in the end, we are looking for, again, combination of three or four concepts together to mark a sentence as something? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, because uh, we want to find sentences where these words are in a syntactic relationship. It is not just a bag of words. If it was a bag of words, we just wanted to take sentences where there is stance and analysis and, uh, and subject. Yeah. And then... Okay. Uh, uh, we, we would have sentences where these words are not syntactically related. Okay, I get it. And so we want we them want... to be syntactically related. Okay, so because we want the relation between the subject and the analysis and the subject and the stance we're doing. This. Okay, right. Okay, got exactly. It. We don't, yes, I think this is really the, uh, the basic, uh, uh, the, the basis of this system. That okay. instead of it, it I, I call I, I call it instead of calling it a, instead of bag of words, which bag of words, which is very powerful, and you can find a lot of things with a bag of words. It is a bag of uh, of, of dependencies. Okay. It is more uh, precise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Ming, do you have a question as well? No, no, I don't have questions. That's okay. very clearly explained. Yeah. Yeah. So then, this is this is this is one rule for this, and then uh, here there is another rule, which is subject analysis and shift and temporality, which is also what does it mean for me? So in in, in with different rules, I wanted to capture different aspects of these these questions, or these, uh, yeah. I, 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 th so these are different ways of modeling these questions in terms of concepts. So these are the rules. And this is context two. And then in self-context, then uh, we, we need a link as well. But the link also can be linked in different ways. So this is why we, we need different, uh, uh, different rules. Like the subject stance with a link or subject analysis with link. Uh, I'm gonna, sorry, yeah. can you uh, talk a bit about the link? So what, what yeah. does the link concept mean? Well, the link uh, was defined in the previous file. And it is, it is some... Uh, so what, what, what is marked as link? It is connectors which express uh, causation or explanation, right? Uh, this is a link. Uh, when you um, when you uh, explain something, you make a link between two things. Well, I called this link because it it it, it is um, uh, uh, grammatical ways or not grammatical. It is ex 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 type kinds kinds of of, of fo formulations for expressing links between two things. Uh, like uh, cause and effect or explaining things. And these have been captured in terms of grammatical features like connector words for as, like, since, 
So when you have a word like this, it is marked as link, or it is uh, the modeling of some expressions like uh, uh, for this reason or uh, in order to or some other expressions which, in the, which, 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 which express that you make a link between two things. Is it, is it clearer? Yeah, yes, yes, uh, nice, yeah, it's clear. So link concept, I think in the, in the beginning of your uh, talk, um, you mentioned about the, yeah, the link concept. Okay, yeah, now I can yeah, yeah, yeah. recall that. Yeah, it is, is the this? same. It is, it, is, it is one of the reflective concepts and it is the, this link concept that, um, that indicates deeper reflection. Okay, thank you. Whenever we find a link in, in the sentence, we say it is deeper reflection. So uh, then we have challenge. How, how is this a problem? And uh, how, how, uh, how does this challenge me? So you have challenged me and here you ha we have a lot of combinations between subject contrast, contrast analysis, contrast stance, etc. So all these are rules that are uh, implemented for the for for the different um, uh, different questions that were that um, indicated the different uh, uh, rhetorical moves of of challenge. For example, there was one which is self-critic. What other ideas could I use? So here I need a subject analysis of some other subject analysis. So if in the sentence a subject uh, analyzes some other subject's analysis, then it is self, self uh, or what is it called? Self-critique, what other ideas could I use to improve myself? So this is what is mapped into this, when you have other subject analysis. And how is this a problem? Well, this, uh, there is subject temporality contrast analysis and stance analysis, for example. So, but uh, maybe there are different ways of, of, of modeling this. These, uh, these uh, um, rules uh, come from actual sentences, Mo uh, a lot of them. And, but they also come from uh, considerations. And then there is self-challenge, which where you have the challenge plus link. And uh, there are different, different ways, different combinations of this. And then change, what do others suggest is a way forward. Others, uh, for example, it is other subject analysis and future term. When, when some, somebody else speaks about future. And uh, why, why should I improve? Uh, wh what should I improve? Why do I need to improve? And here it needs causality, but uh, this is not implemented here. So it is a future term of some contrast in the future and contrast analysis and contrast stance. So this is improvement, it is a change, it, there is a contrast for the future. And potential solution, which is just subject analysis of future, uh, if, uh, concerning the future. Uh, there are several rules like this. Um, what is this self change? Ah, yes, the, uh, uh, it, 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 it is the change plus link. It is um, the deeper reflection. Whenever it is self, uh, it was a previous, uh, previous name for the deeper analysis, the self, we record it like this. And uh, so here, once, once uh, these tags have been given to the sentences, so the different rules that, uh, uh, that make up context, context one, they are, they are all just context, so they are mapped just into one final category, like context, and the category for deeper reflection is called link to me. And that's it. And this is, this is the end. And then I made also a hierarchy because I didn't want uh, a sentence to have several 
several uh, tags. So a, a sentence is either challenge or context or change. Not all the three. Because, uh, well, they could be. Sorry, Agnes, can you explain a uh, link to me and self critique? Uh, that's two tags again. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, so whatever is has, it, it, it is. I, I'm very sorry about it. Is it's just some historical thing, and I I didn't rewrite the grammar each time we changed our terminology, <laughs> and our terminology at the beginning for deep reflection was just the prefix self, and this is mapped into link to me. Link to me is 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 uh, the the feature that uh, that um, that means deep reflection. Okay, so that's in, 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 in the output, it is it is just terminology. It, it 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 has no deep meaning or anything. But because the system evolved, and first we called these uh, the, the categories had different names, and it is in the end that it crystallized the context challenge and change and um, and all and and what was self change has become change and link to me that is change and deeper reflection but you can okay. call it whatever you like oh, okay so link to me basically is uh, refers to deep reflection um, exactly but, exactly oh, and but in in the original grammar it was called self how about uh, and I didn't uh, rewrite the whole yeah so sorry how about a uh, uh, self critique uh, well self critique uh, it, it 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 is like self challenge or something like this self critique it it's not a it's 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 not a category in this grammar it is a self critique is um, can be mapped into, for example, challenge, or other 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 subject reflection, or or or, or if if somebody else criticizes me and I I uh, uh, recognize it, but I think that self critique would be uh, like challenge. But self critique itself is not uh, something that is. Uh, um, modeled here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we should probably um, hit the stop button at that point. Um, uh, we always start getting new thoughts and questions as we go through this, and we will pick that up after the today. But thank you, Agnes, again for taking the time to prepare that for us. And of course, we've got it all recorded. And uh, this will be a great resource for our, our future team and hopefully others within um, the, the ATN project and, and, in fact, around the world. So thank you very much. <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll keep the conversation going. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I think there is a lot to speak about the reflective grammar. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a work in progress. And every time we try it out with new things, then we, we discover, of course, exceptions. Um, and um, uh, when you come over, um, we will share more with you about what we're doing with machine learning, uh, which is very, very interesting. Combining machine learning with the, yeah. out with the output from this rule base. Um, exactly. Exactly. I think it would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we can show you the progress we've made on that. Okay. All right. I will stop the recording now. And um...